Hey guys, so last time we talked about the z-score, how to determine the z-score, and also what does the z-score tell us about the x value that it's tied to. So now let's go ahead and move on to talking about the z-table. So the empirical rule gives you an estimate of probabilities within set intervals, right? And so it tells you, for example, what is the probability associated with um, in for the area in between the mean plus one z-score, I mean one standard deviation, and also the mean minus one standard deviation, right? And so between negative one and one z-scores or below one standard deviation and above one standard deviation, we have about 68% of observations lie within there. And then we also have 95% within two standard deviations and then 99.7% within three standard deviations. So now what if there's intervals that aren't so simple? So for example, between 1.28 and 1.96. Our, our empirical rule only tells us for 1, 2, and 3, not anything in between. So we have to use the z-table to get probabilities for any one of those intervals. Now here's a little kind of excerpt of the z-table. Um, but we see here that the area that's shaded represents the area from 0 to z. So the table has probabilities that represent the area from 0 is the mean to any x value, right? And so in z world, the mean gets zero, and then the z value corresponds, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the x value or the x score or whatever the, um, one value that we're interested in corresponds to or is tied to a z score, right? So the mean gets zero, and the x value that we're interested in gets turned into a z score now. So we see here that we have an area that's shaded from 0 to z, and the z that I've pointed out is, it says 0.2 on the left, right? So you go down to 0.2, and then across is 0 0.07. So 0 0.2 plus 0 0.07 gives us a total of 0.27. Therefore, that is our z-score. That's the z-score that I looked up in this particular case, and the area that I found, or the probability that I found associated with that is 0.1064. But again, that's the probability associated with the area from 0 to z. So, And the z-score in this particular case was 0.27. Does that make sense? So from 0 to 0.27, the area in between that is 0.1064, or about 10.64%. Now, this highlighted number is the probability of finding the z-score between 0 to 0.27. And another way of writing this would be, and this is kind of like a mathy way, uh, but you may see this in your books, is 0.1064 equals the probability that z, so the z goes in the middle, it's between 0 and 0.27. So that's just a mathematical way of writing um, what I just said. Now, with these examples, I'm going to need a z-table. Your z-table is going to be the last page of, this whole con of the, all the contents of the set. So once you look at the last page, that is the z-table. However, for the examples and the practice problems that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to attach a z-table to every PDF that I use. So you're going to have one all the way at the end, while me, so that I can work with you guys, I'll have one for every page, so that I can scroll up and down and use the z-table as I see fit. So what is the probability of finding a z-score between 0 and 1.96? So 0 goes in the middle, right? Because that's the means, the midpoints, just the middle. And then 1.96 is the, the z-score that we're interested in. And since it's positive, again, I know that I'm to the right of the midpoint or to the right of the mean, right? So it's kind of tying back some things that we've already talked about. That's why I said it's very important because these are concepts that by next chapter we just have to know from the get-go. I should not have to explain them again. So let's just make sure we hash all this out now. So 1.96, and we're looking for the area or the probability, and I say area or probability because they're very interchangeable now, associated with everything in between, right? So we have 0, 1.96, all that area in between, that's what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and look at the z-table and see what we find. So if we're looking for a z, what we do is go on the outer edges, right? Because the outer edges are our z-scores, and the inside is the prob are the, all the probabilities. So that meat of the table is the probabilities associated with the z-scores on the ends. So here we have z, and we start off with the column one, right? We go with the column one and then go across to the second number. So first things first, we need to get 1.9. There it is. So we got 1.9, and then we go across to 0.6. So this column here is the 0.6 column. 
Now, once we do that, we go ahead and kind of like connect the dots. So you go across and go down all the way. And the number that results is the probability. Now, whether it's the probability you're looking for or not, that's a question that you ask yourself a little later. So let's go back to the problem with 0.4750 and see if that's our answer. So what I'd like to do with this is write in the area to where it corresponds to. So the area that we found was from 0 to 1.96. So this little z, the one we looked for was 1.96. So the area from 0 to 1.96 is at 47.50. So I go ahead and put that in. And sometimes it may not correspond to the area that we shade. Other times it may be, for example, from 1.96 up. That 47.50 wouldn't be our answer in that case. Does that make sense? But since we're looking from 0 to 1.96, that's what our table gives us. So we're good to go. That is our answer. So the probability, I'm going to write this every time too so that you guys kind of get used to seeing it this way. The probability that z is between 0 and 1.96 is 0.4750. Cool, so that's it for our first one. Let's try a couple more and then we'll move on to the practice set at the end so you guys can get a chance to dive in and try some things out. What is the probability of finding a z-score between negative 1.28 and 1.28? So, in this case, we have, I'm gonna put our zero here but with a dotted line because that's not actually what we're interested in, right? But that is our midpoint. And then we have 1.28 over here. And we also have negative 1.28 on the other side. So what do we do in this situation? Let's start off by just looking up 1.28. So we go to the left 1.2, right? And so I'm gonna highlight that a different color. Let's do green. So we have 1.2, and then we go across to 0.8, right? So this is this column right here. So we go down to 0.08. Again, just kind of connect the dots type of situation. So we go all the way down. And here we go. So we got 0.3997. So 0.3997, let's go back up to our problem, corresponds to what area? So we're looking for all of this, right, between negative 1.28 and 1.28, but our area of 0.3997 only corresponds to this here. That was ugly. Go ahead and switch the colors up. So again, we're shading from negative 1.28, and then here's 0.3997, right? And so the area only corresponds to from 0 to 1.28. Again, that's how our table works, right? So if that's 3997, is that our final answer? No, we're gonna have to double that, right? And the reason why I say double is because Let's go down here. Let's look up, try to look up negative 1.28. So if we look, try to look up negative, there's actually no negative numbers on here, right? So negative 1.28 isn't on there, but we know because of symmetry, right? Let's say this was negative z. The area from 0 to positive z is going to be exactly the same as the area from 0 to negative z. And the reason for that is because, again, it's symmetric. So either way, you're just flip-flopping. So this could be, let's say, 0.10. Then this is going to be 0.10 as well. right? So essentially, even though I found 1.28, I also found from 0 to negative 1.28. So here we go. And again, this has to do with symmetry. So symmetry is our friend in this case. It's always our friend, actually. It's never our enemy. Um, so then the probability of finding a z-score between negative 1.28 and 1.28 is just double, or if you want, you can add them. But essentially, you're adding 0.3997 and 0.3997. You're basically doubling it. So. That gives us a probability of 0.7994. Right? Does that make sense? So let's keep going on. 
So we have example three. Find the probability that z is greater than 2.58. So we have again our zero, right? And here's 2.58. So let's go ahead and look up 2.58 on our table. And just real quick, let's go ahead and shade in also what we're looking for. We're looking for 2.58 and on, right? So from 2.58 to the right. So once we look up 2.58, we get 2.5. And then 0.08 is the same column that 3997 was on. So I'm just going to go ahead and go from here. So we got 0 0.4951. Let's go back up to our table or our problem. Now, what area does that correspond to? It's from 0 to 2.58, right? So here's 0 0.4951. Now, is that our answer? No, our answer, we're looking for this area here, right? So what do we know about the, the probability table though? So the density curve, everything underneath there should be equal to what? What should all those probabilities together equal to? One, right? So that means that if it's split in half by the mean, how much should be to the right of the mean? So from the mean all the way to the right. If it's all one, that means from the mean all the way down, we should have half of one, right? Or 0.50 or 0 0.5000. So if I have 0.50 is the whole thing, 0.4951 is from 0 to 2.58, then whatever's left over here is just the difference of those two probabilities, right? And so this is very similar. We've, we've kind of seen this concept before. So the probability that z is between 0, I'm sorry, not 0, from t z is greater than 2.58 equals 0.5 minus 0.4951 and that leaves us with 0 0.0049 right so that's our probability for example three let's look, do example four and then we'll move to the practice set so probability that z is greater than negative 3.65 so here's zero here's negative 3.65 right and we're I'm doing it on the left because negative means that it's below the mean or below the zero point and we're looking for everything greater than that, right? I know I can't color the lines, it's okay. <laughs> um, so the probability that z is greater than negative 3.65, let's look up 3.65 and see where we go from there. So 3.6, and the table actually stops at 3.49, right? So what do we do from there? Crazy. I wrote this kind of warning. Anything past here, just assume 0.5. So you see how the numbers are getting closer and closer and closer to 0.5? Does that make sense? So as you move further and further away, the little areas get so small and so itty bitty that they basically don't increase from there on. And at a certain point, we just assume that it's far enough out that it's just 0.5. So let's go ahead and go back up here. And so, if we're assuming that it's 0.5, that means the area from 0 to negative 3.65 is 0.5, right? Or 0 0.5000 if we want to get crazy. So if that area is 0 0.5000, how much is from 3.65 all the way up? So we have from 0 to negative 3.65 is 0.5. From 0, let's move on to the right. How much should this area be? Kind of just did an example just like that, right? So in example 3, we said from 0 all the way to the end, all the way to infinity, is 0.5. So if from 0 to negative 3.65 is 0.5, and then from 0 all the way up to the rest of the curve is 0.5, then our probability should be what? It's 0.5 plus 0.5, and we get a total of 1. 
there's a 100% chance that we find a z-score that is greater than negative 3.65. And the reason for that is because negative 3.65 is so low and so extremely low that the chances of us finding anything from there and higher is 100%. Because it's so unlikely that you'll find anything that low anyways. So it's going to be 100%. There's fully likely that you're going to find something higher than this extremely low number. So that's about it for our concept. Let's go ahead and move on to our practice problems and apply some of these concepts.